and welcome to The Drum. I'm Steve Kinane. Coming up, Joe Hockey mistaken for a green by one of his own backbenchers. How John Howard persuaded Malcolm Turnbull to stay in politics. And should abusive parents be banned from having more kids? Our panel tonight, Annabelle Crabb, Chief Political Writer with ABC Online, Julia Morrow from The Chaser and Alan Anderson, former advisor to Peter Costello. First up tonight, Joe Hockey's call for the federal government to stop the banks lifting interest rates above the official rise hasn't impressed everyone. The Treasurer has accused him of trying to remove the Reserve Bank's independence. The Banking Association isn't happy. Even Mr Hockey's own colleagues seem confused. West Australian Liberal backbencher Don Randall labelled the concept crazy after mistakenly assuming it came from the Greens. This is just another one of the, as I said, lunatic fringe type ideas. Uh, but that's the problem that the Gillard government's got now. They've got a uh, green coalition which is dragging them to the left of Australian politics with all these crazy ideas. And, you know, I, I don't know whether the rural independents realised what they were doing when they uh, put Australia in the dock uh, with uh, this sort of coalition. It's, it's really going to have a pretty uh, negative effect on, you know, our economy, the way we do business. You know, so many Australians will be affected when you think about individual mortgages. And those comments left Joe Hockey, Hockey fumbling for the right words to explain what he thinks the government should be doing. Levers are the key, apparently. Uh, I, there's a few, there's a few, there's a few levers we've used in the past. Uh, when I was financial service, well, okay, I'm getting there. Relax. Therefore, what levers are available? There are a number of levers. Obviously, legislation is part of it. There are a number of levers available. Obviously, legislation is part of it, right? But I. Well, not if I can finish. Uh... Which all made sport for the Treasurer at Wayne Swan in question time this afternoon. And this is what he said about those views. He said, just another one of their lunatic fringe type ideas, Mr Speaker. <laughs> it, it does pay me to say it, but I couldn't agree more with the member for Canning. Oh. Yeah. Don Randall later told Parliament his comments at the doorstop this morning did not refer to Mr Hockey's idea but to a green stance on a super profits tax on banks. Now, Annabelle, this was not good for Don Randall and it wasn't good for Joe Hockey, was it? Well, it's kind of a hard day at the office when Don Randall describes you as a lunatic, you know, kind of on any, on any day, but um, particularly when he mistakes you for a green, and that was a bit of a difficulty for Joe Hockey. Look, it is unusual to see um, a, a person from the Liberal Party, which is genuinely you know, and generally a kind of champion of the free market, to, uh, to be advocating more interference by government in, uh, in a... Um, an industry that is, uh, you know, a free market industry. I also would like to know how this is going down at home for Joe Hockey. His wife's a banker, so <laughs> I can assume that, you know, she'll be thrilled with this idea. We're getting a bit of uh, chaffing at work, I imagine, about it. But, um, you know, this is um, a kind of a common opposition approach, which is to um, help voters believe that you, as the opposition, would be much, much better at fixing something that they're annoyed about Yeah, particularly hip pocket issues. And we is. saw Kevin Rudd doing this in the lead-up to well, the 2007 exactly. I mean, election it's, with it's, groceries, with, with yeah. all kinds of things, didn't we? And, and, it, these, and the roles are interchangeable. I mean, can you imagine five years ago if, uh, when Peter Costello was the Treasurer, Imagine if um, the then Labor shadow treasurer had suggested, you know, uh, government involvement in setting banks' interest rates. I mean, you could have it would have reverberated down the generations. I he, he would have jumped Peter all Costello's over it, wouldn't he, Alan? <laughs> if oh. Peter Costello was the treasurer, <laughs> absolutely. And uh, look, I think this is obviously dumb policy, but more than that, it's really dumb politics. That's what strikes me about it. I mean, this is the sort of thing that you see state oppositions doing that has kept them in opposition for so long. And basically what you're seeing is someone who's opportunistically grabbed a headline. Uh, it may go down OK on sunrise, this sort of thing, but it doesn't really play well if you're posing as the alternative treasurer of Australia. Do you think it's something that, that damages the brand of the Liberal Party, given that for years that they've been campaigning on economic credibility? Look, I don't want to overstate this. Uh, what I really mean is that uh, as you have multiple instances of this sort of thing over a term of opposition where people start shooting off silly ideas that are basically inconsistent with the overall brand of the party, then voters start to get a confused message. So, I mean, there are plenty of things to beat up the... Uh, sorry, now, the Gillard government on mm. about interest rates. Uh, obviously, you can uh, beat them up in terms of their spending. You could have beaten them up also in terms of their intervention in the uh, banking sector. Uh, instead, uh, Joe Hockey has basically leapt over to the other side of them 
And in doing so, he's left uh, voters, I think, with a very inconsistent picture of what they stand for. Ju Julian, would you be upset if Don, Don Randall labelled you a lunatic? <laughs> uh, I'd take that as a compliment from has, Don. Yeah, yeah, I think that's, that, that's part of his regular shtick. Uh, look, this was, a, this was a classic parliamentary doors gotcha. Um, you know, every day the, the backbenchers file in and the reporters are there hoping that somebody will have missed a point or will somehow stuff up. And I must say that I, I want to commend all the people who were standing on those doors this morning, because you could see a little bit of a wave in the microphones as Don <laughs> continued to speak. I don't think it was a win factor. I think it was all those, all they those let him go on journos going, we've got him here, this is great. Yeah. And on. I can see an early coffee coming as on. As he fed yeah. out more rope and more rope. Oh, it was just, ju just spectacular. Um, uh, but, it was I mean, taken out of context. Well, indeed. <laughs> totally misinterpreted. <laughs> but, um, look, I mean, I think that, uh, you know, Alan's right, that effectively... Joe Hockey's comments were going to make a bad news day for Joe Hockey under any circumstances, but the Randall comments just made it particularly bad. Uh, there, I think Joe's talking about uh, levers, and he may be standing on a trapdoor that he's holding the lever of as we speak. Um, this is, to me, I take this as a, as a comment on uh, the way the Liberal Party is settling into opposition, as Annabelle said. Uh, they're clearly not expecting this parliament to um, collapse anytime soon, and they're getting the silly ideas out of the way early. It's certainly not good for Joe Hockey purporting to position himself as a potential successor to... Uh, um, the and, and Annabelle, what about uh, Andrew Robb, the finance spokesman, spokesman for the Coalition? He has coveted Joe Hockey's job. Do you think he might be trampling the door down there a bit? Well, um, he featured in dispatches uh, in the Treasurer's attacks today as well for having kind of wafted around the idea that the government, last week, that the government should be doing more to uh, rescue for the Australian currency from its dangerous state of parity with the US dollar, which is course, terrific, terrific for overseas holidays, but not so great for primary producers and so on. Um, so, yes, there is uh, tension between um, Andrew Robb and Joe Hockey, and yes, I think that Andrew Robb would be uh, having a, a quiet little snicker behind his hand. I suspect that some of the discomfiture of Joe Hockey today. But um, look, the other person that's been interesting this morning is that um, is Malcolm Turnbull, who is kind of the uber non-interventionist, you know, um, free marketeer in the ranks of the of the coalition. And he was asked by Fran Kelly this morning what he thought about Joe Hockey's remarks. Now, we've discussed in this forum before the quality of uh, Malcolm Turnbull's poker face. It's not very good, <laughs> even on radio. <laughs> and I think he said, he said, well, I... <laughs> Oh, you'd have to ask Joe about that, but then couldn't help himself from adding that he wasn't aware of any modern precedents for uh, any such intervention. But look, for the government, it continues to be a difficulty. I mean, yes, they have been for um, on a number of occasions saying, look, you know, to the banks, you shouldn't be putting up interest rates um, out of out of the cycle, and um, and the banks have been ignoring them. And um, I guess you know, Joe Hockey's question, why can't you do more, is one that I suspect will have some resonance in households where people yeah. are sick of seeing banks behaving in this way, particularly when they're um, making I'm sure profits. it would, but, Alan, can the government do anything about if a bank decides to independently in increase uh, home loan uh, mortgage rates when the reserve isn't? Well, of course it can do things about it, but it certainly shouldn't do things about it. I mean, uh, the only thing it should be doing is trying to ensure that there's a competitive market in uh, financial services and to a large extent we have that in Australia and when interest rates are rising uh, out of sync with the reserve it probably reflects the changing cost of funds to the banks. And, and Jules this, this policy may appeal to Tony Abbott because as revealed on The Chaser he is suffering from mortgage stress. Indeed, <laughs> indeed, yeah well he, he's one of the most highly geared, that's one of the few areas in which Tony is geared most of the time <laughs> but um, look I mean I suppose in some, to some extent uh, Tony Abbott should take Joe, Joe Hockey's com comments as a compliment because they really embrace the idea of uh, an, an opposition that is so hell-bent on popularity that it will throw all its principles out in the, in the name of winning the news cycle. Um, I don't know that Joe's done himself any favours and I don't think he'll be getting much support from Tony for it. Well, we should uh, hear some other comments that Don Randall made today <laughs> at that same doorstop. He, he did talk a little bit out the front of Parliament House and he made a, a, a strange reference to the ABC. Let's have a listen to that. ABC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Your ABC. Not my ABC. <laughs> Gay BC. The Gay BC. Jules, what was he referring to there? 
Well, um, it's pretty clear that what's going on here is uh, that Don's making a play for the Shadow Communications Ministry. I mean, he's, <laughs> he's essentially articulated coalition policy uh, when it comes to public broadcasting. But, um, uh, well, I've, I've heard that line before many a time, but it normally emanates from the ranks of um, the, the country party, the national party. Uh, so, I don't know, I think it's perhaps a sign that, uh, that the coalition is genuinely strong and that there's a mutual sharing of views. <laughs> Can't we get him into the Senate? I mean, yeah, that's right. <laughs> this is what estimates needs. I well, think. this is the... Yeah, the Liberal Party is developing its own Barnaby slowly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think it was stomping on a, a cord, a, a sound, a soundos cord. That's an ancient <laughs> West Australian tradition, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Signifies extreme contempt. It's Alan? interesting, though, that you've seen this sort of tactic in the US where Obama went after Fox News last year and it was a giant failure. And, I mean, if there's one lesson to take out of this, it's uh, if you're a politician... Uh, the media is not the people you're meant to be fighting. Yeah. So uh, someone should mention that to Senator Conroy, who spent most of today tussling with the Australian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I must say, oh, look, I, I honestly think it's, it's genuinely concerning that the amount of kind of uh, fiefdom fighting between News and the ABC, News Limited and the ABC at the moment, I don't think is good for uh, the Australian media. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I think you need to play uh, the man or the person... Not the ball. Um, sorry, the other way around. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, no, I had a bit of a Don Randall moment there. Yeah. Well, let's move on to some other issues in Parliament today. And the parliamentary debate on Australia's involvement in Afghanistan continued today. The former Prime Minister Kevin Rudd was among those having his say. The truth is that our continued operations in Afghanistan against the Taliban to deny the return of al-Qaeda and its allies to Afghanistan combined with coordinated counter-terrorism operations around the world, have helped in preventing a repetition of a series of large-scale September 11 type attacks. There should be no precipitate withdrawal from Afghanistan. To do so would be a grave strategic and tactical error, as the history books would surely record when this chapter is closed. And Independent Rob Oakeshott asked Julia Gillard to reconsider her 10-year commitment to Afghanistan. I would therefore ask the Prime Minister to consider and to reconsider her 10-year military commitment and bring that forward to at least 2014. And I would ask for her to admit we are talking to the Taliban now and we are working for a peaceful settlement now. We are a stronger democracy, Mr Deputy Speaker, if she does. Alan, what did you make of Rob Oakeshott's comments? Oh, look, uh, I think it just reminds me of the Greens' policy of uh, trying to get parliamentary approval for any military action, and I think Rob Oakeshott's the strongest argument against that. I mean, uh, by the time uh, he would be done, they would have taken Canberra. <laughs> Jules, what do you think of that? Well, look, there's a, there's a couple of things. I mean, uh, Rob Oakeshott, of course, famously called for a, a government of national unity uh, in Australia. I was vaguely hoping he'd do the same uh, for Afghanistan today. And I, and I think...